lesson number one, and I am appropriately garbed to look like I know what I'm talking about, which is a, a useful thing. But actually that's the beauty of Tower Garden and this whole process is actually, it's really simple. It's a little bit of GCSE chemistry in there when it comes to understanding pH, but realistically you don't need to be absolutely on it all the time with it. So pH, what does it mean? Why is it important for plants? So pH is really important when it comes to the plant being able to take the liquid nutrient up into its system. If it is that it is too far out of the optimum level, then it finds it really difficult or starts to find it really difficult to actually then absorb the nutrients. And you will notice that because leaves will start turning different colors. So they'll start yellowing and it's simply a symptom of that actually occurring and your pH is not right. The optimum pH for a tower garden is 6.5. Now, different plants like different levels of pH. So some of them would like 5.9, strawberries like it uh, 5.5, 5 to 5.5, and then others would like it a bit more alkaline. But because you've got a whole load of different plants in the tower garden, you're looking to find that perfect medium. And that perfect medium is 6.5. But again, don't go crazy on it. Six, seven, you know, if it goes out, it's not going to do major damage to the plants. It's when it starts going up much higher than that or much lower than that, that there is gonna be a problem. How do you get the optimum level for the pH? It's really very simple. Frankly, it's just like baking a cake. If you want something slightly sweeter, you put more sugar in. If you want something to be less sweet, then you put more water in. You basically just marry up what your situation is with what is called pH up, and pH down. Now pH down is uh, an acid and it will basically, with very small amounts, you drip it into your tower garden and it will bring the pH down to the optimum level. Same with pH up, it's an alkaline, right? It's really simple. So that's how you would do it. You would basically register what your liquid, your water is at the moment and then you would add either a pH up or a pH down depending upon what you need to do. So how do you do that? How do you understand where your pH is? So pH down. Now this is a, a variety that we're trialing at the moment. You can get lots of different pH downs depending upon the company and your requirement. But in our case, we previously used quite a strong one and that would be the norm with this type of thing. But this one's really interesting. This is citric acid and therefore it is less corrosive and therefore safer to use in, in many respects. And I like it on that level as much as anything else. Remember, always wearing gloves. When we sell some acid to you, we will provide gloves with that sale, but you must always wear gloves, whichever type of level, whether it's phosphoric or citric or whatever, gotta wear gloves. So anyway, this is this uh, BioBiz, and what you're doing is you're using a pipette because that's really, the levels of concentration you need to be thinking about. You're not pouring this stuff in, you pour it in and it'll be way too much. You're putting in bit by bit, testing the pH in the water by swirling the water and then going in again and going in again and just do it bit by bit rather than doing the shortcut bit, which is what I generally would do and then completely mess the whole thing up. So let's get in. Right guys, this is it. You turn it on, you then, Move this delightful watermelon out of the way. You put it in the water. Firstly, taking off the head. Into the water. And immediately, I don't know whether you can see that, immediately it is finding the pH. At the moment it's saying 6.8, which frankly is really pretty good. I'm not upset with that in the slightest. In fact, I'd probably leave it. But with the idea that I'm showing you guys exactly how you're supposed to do it, what we're gonna do is we're now going to add a little bit of pH down to bring that from 6.8 to 6.5. Okie dokie, so this beautiful melon, I'm gonna to have to move because I'm suddenly worried about getting acid directly on it, spreading it open, there she blows. So we are taking a little bit of a time. We're going to give a bit of a squeeze, suck up. Now that is a full pipette, which in my mind is way too much. I'm gonna go down to, let's say, let's do it one at, one at a time. So that's one mil 
at a time in there. Give the water a bit of a, a mix. You've got to really give it a mix. Then pH pen, turning on, putting in the water. It is now made no difference at one. So actually this is as much because of our new one. It's considerably lighter. The other variety would have brought it down with a bit of that. But anyway, so bring her out, it's fine. We're gonna now, let's have a go at putting in I'm going to put in three on this one. Let's have a go. Three going in, giving it a swirl. Pet's really not what you should be swirling it with, but as again, I am just exceptionally lazy, so I'm going to do that. Now, pH pen back in again. Come on, let's see whether it's made a difference. Oh, wow, that's really interesting. So that's actually taking it down to, well, that's saying 6.2. So that three has dropped it by quite a bit. So that's what I mean. Really, there is your perfect example of me being utterly lazy. Put it in one at a time to start with. You will eventually get to know, this is brand new to us, this citric acid. So uh, the other one I know very well, and I know that one, first one I did would have brought it right down to exactly where I wanted. This one, it's gone a little bit south, but again, I'm not even vaguely worried. You add a bit more water, that's gonna bring me the alkaline up and it'll all balance out. So I'm currently sitting at 6.3, perfectly happy with that. There we go. Right people, chemistry lesson over. That was um, pretty much it, it's really simple. No need to make a big thing of it at all. There is just a process that you need to go through, which is just part of the process of growing this way. When you compare growing this way with growing in the soil, it is like so much easier. There's so much less to do that the odd bit that you need to do once a week is easy. I'm going to put all of the links to these products in the description below. If you have any worries with this in the slightest, then please get in touch and we will happily get back to you in terms of what uh, you are experiencing, but otherwise that's it. Thanks very much.